Best in the biz. Yeah. Join the team. CTR is who we are. The media network. That's the best by far. Whether you listen at your home, at your job, in your car. Come get the information that's needed above all. Never lasting. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Sheila C. Hill Show. And that C stands for come on in this room and have a sit down so we can chit chat on today. Let me tell you, we are the, we're so excited that you're here. Now, the Sheila C. Hill Show is the ultimate go-to podcast for ambitious individuals who want to live a more fulfilling life and successful life to help you get valuable insights and expert tips and also inspiring stories to help you improve your lifestyle, grow your business, and enhance your emotional well-being. Now, in every episode, you're going to gain practical tips and insightful wisdom in the company of a supportive community of like-minded individuals, which, hey, I call them Sheila's Thrive Tribe. Yes, because we thrive over here, okay? But if you are new to the show, I am your host, Sheila C. Hill, and I just want to say hello, hola, bonjour, come on, musta, ni hao, howdy, and what's up, y'all? You are in for a treat today. Now, before we get started, don't forget to subscribe, follow, and share So you can join the Thrive Tribe, baby. That's where it's at. That is where it's at. Listen, today I'm so excited to have a special guest with us today. Listen, I have told you time and time again, we bring the best guests on the Sheila C. Hill Show. We are VIP. We are not regular smegglers, okay? We are VIP in this joint. At this time, I would like to introduce... Miss Abby, now listen, this lady, woo, this queen is off the chain. She has been an entrepreneur for over 12 years. She started a pathway into government contracting and made an impressionable entrance. Like, you know, when you jump in a pool and all the water gone. Yeah, she made a splash in the government contracting. She also has a keen eye for business and she can always spot opportunities. See, that's what I'm talking about. She will always share the things and the opportunities to her community. That's what it's all about, having a heart for the community. But now that she knows and she understands the knowledge base and she has access to the land of opportunities, which is government contracting, she desires to share that access with her community. And I'm so glad to have her today. Miss Abby, let me say, uh, let me see if I pronounce your last name. Soufrant? Is it French? Soufrant, it is French. It is French. My husband is Haitian, so Soufrant, honey. And you can say the fancy as you want to, okay? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, ma'am. Welcome to the Sheila C. Hill Show. It's an honor to have you here. Let's go. Let's get it. I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, so just give the audience just an overview of your entrepreneurship or or just your elevator pitch in a sense. Okay, let me give y'all the quick and dirty. My name is Abby Soufrant. I have been a entrepreneur for 12 years um, and newly, not say newly, but within the last 18 months, I have delved into government contracting, which makes everything that I do um, make sense. Um, I am a wife of 15 years. I have five children, one of special needs. So you can just imagine my party of seven always keeps me busy, keeps me moving. However, my heart, my heart, my heart is for the community and entrepreneurship. We go together. Entrepreneurship ain't leaving me and I'm not leaving it. Okay. And I'm also not leaving my community. Um, I'm known as a shopping contract queen. Um, because I love doing shopping contracts for the government, but I also do other contracts for them. And my heart and desire is to teach my community how to evolve their business 
not just doing it with customers and not even doing it with corporate, but let's open up that door and avenue for government. Because let me tell y'all, the government got a really, 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 really good budget and they pay and they pay. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave, leave that at that, Ms. Sheila, because we're going to go into it more. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Awesome. I love it. I can hear your passion just coming on through, sis. Yes. Okay. Now, what interests do you in becoming an entrepreneur anyway? What What was the deciding moment 12 years ago to become an entrepreneur? So to be honest, just being 100% transparent, that's, what, that's yes. what I give you. Nobody would hire me, right? I, I did what I was supposed to do. I went to college. I got a degree. I have my bachelor's in accounting nobody, when I tell you nobody, I buy to so many places, nobody would hire little old me. And I was willing to work. I wanted to work. I wanted to help provide my family, all the things you know, you're supposed to do, right? Um, yeah, no one hired me. So then I, I did what was, what made sense, right? I went and got my master's degree, right? But towards, in that journey of getting my master's degree, I was literally one class short of completing my master's and I was burnt out. I was burned out because I was still applying for jobs within accounting. And most people don't like accounting. They don't like numbers. I love it. That, that stuff makes sense in my brain, right? I, I love it. Okay. Um, but even going through that master's program at that time, my husband and I had two children and it was just becoming a lot, you know, and at, at some point I was like, you know what? I don't even care. So I, I stopped my program. <laughs> I stopped my program one class short what? I would say probably about nine months later, the university reached out to me and said, hey, you have one class left to complete for your master's. We will pay for it for you, what? which is smart on their end, right? Because they want to they want to keep their numbers up, right? They exactly. want to make, listen now. There's a strategy for things. People have to know, right? They reached right. out to me and I said, OK, fine. If you're going to pay for it, I'm just literally going to do the minimum just to do it, to say I did it. I got my master's degree. I accomplished it. I didn't even open up my package that had my degree until a year later. And I was cleaning up my house. I, when I tell you I was done, I was done because I was so discouraged that no one wanted to hire me. Like, what is it about me that y'all don't want to hire? Like, I know there's definitely a need for accounting everywhere. However, when nobody wants to hire you, when you're also still building your family, um, you know, it's a lot going on that you have to juggle. At some point, I was just like, you know what? I'm tired of trying to fight. My husband's like, listen, I take care of everything. It's okay. You used to be a mom, whatever, right? So a little bit of even, even more background, even until entrepreneurship, my father is an entrepreneur. Now, my dad, okay. my, my dad's side of the family from Ghana. So my dad lives in Ghana. And so he has, to me, he's the ultimate boss. Like when I tell you I have a blueprint of just like boss, boss, my daddy, like all the way. Eric, hi, daddy, in case you're listening. Hey, <laughs> um, he, I got my first introduction into what entrepreneurship, being a business owner is, looking and observing him. And it was like, this is quite impressive. Right. So I had a little bit of, of that in my DNA. Right. And didn't, I didn't necessarily choose that route because I chose the route that we I like we know to do. Right. And then when that didn't work, I had to figure out something else. And so just being honest. Right. And, you know, we're we're still a young couple. We have two kids and the struggle is real. Right. Um, the bills be building, the math ain't math, and the kids need to be fed, right? And so, funny story, my husband and I would always, and I know back in the day, they used to do this all the time, like in the 2000s, right? They would send us mailers or mailing invitations for us to attend, like, business seminars where they include dinners and different things like that. So, me and my husband would literally just go, like, even like, like you know, when they do, like, timeshare stuff in, like, Florida and different, like, um, uh places where people go vacation. So they like they did that here. I'm pretty sure they did it nationwide, but we would literally just go just to eat the dinner. Because one, we knew we couldn't afford any program that they're suggesting that we need to um, buy. We literally came <laughs> just for the dinner and had a great time just being there. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh. I know there's got to be somebody else that relates. When yes. it is hard, you, you make it work by any means necessary. And I honestly, I haven't seen those mailers in probably about a good 10 years. We were doing that and they were like, we're going to give away a free gift. And it'd be like some little yeah. three, whatever. We would really just go to get dinner, literally. 
And so, wow. uh, listen, it was crazy, but that's what we did. I mean, that, that's that's yeah. my story. And you got to do what you got to do. I understand coming from the bottom, coming from the bottom, yeah. you know, when you when your only form of extra money is like during tax return time and you're grateful you have kids because you get a little bit of extra money coming back. Listen, I'm trying to tell y'all I done been through it. I know it. I got the tax returns, receipts to, to, to show it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Okay. So through that process, what on the street is that being a business owner literally saved your family's life? It did. So yeah. So with that, how do you, okay. So you expound on that a little bit more okay. so you can help someone who may be at that place right now. Right. Okay. So, um, so my husband has always worked, right. He's always been the provider, whatever. So I've, I just had time and, you know, time to kind of figure out what I wanted to do. You know, I, I had that grace. So I just wanted to put that out there. Right. Um, I always knew when I told my husband years ago, like the way my brain processes things, I see opportunities everywhere, not knowing how to better leverage that, but over time and me just being in, in different places and spaces, it helped me curate to where I am now, right? So just know that one, it's gonna be a process. You may not get it all today, you may not even get it all in a year, but just know that your process is not in vain, right? The only reason why I'm even in this position is because I didn't give up, okay? So I just wanna keep you encouraged. And I'm like I said, I'm 12 years in the game, right? It may not take y'all 12 years because we have so many, so we have access to so many different tools and resources now that make it a lot easier, Um, but, just don't give up. So um, through the years, I have started several different businesses. I've done taxes. I've done inflatables. I've done hair when I don't really know how to do hair and I had to get refunds back because I did a bad job. I'm just telling y'all the whole truth, right? Uh, What else have I done? Um, And so the one thing I've done that's been consistent probably for the last six years has been um, business development and coaching, right? Because I still love entrepreneurship. I wanted to get better at it, learn more about it. So um, I delved definitely into it, trying to learn more about it. And then I started helping other business owners scale and grow as well, right? Okay. And then there was a family friend of ours who taught us a very, very niche skill within real estate that literally helped keep our family's head above water, right? And so most people don't know, but we were, we, um, one of my companies is a title abstracting company. People are like, what is title abstracting? That is basically where you do like your background checks on property, residential and commercial, right? Every Everyone who pretty much buys and sells properties has to go through a title check, one to verify who owns it, what you know what what all do they have tied to that property what liens let's make sure that they actually own it and not somebody from 50 years ago that still owns it that's an heir that can come back and take your property they absolutely can right so my company does that and we've been doing that now since we've been doing that since 2017 and we're still going my husband operates that right okay. so at the time we were just we were both doing that um particular line of work. And so in 2018, I gave birth to my son, Lorenz, who's my superstar. And we didn't know. So he was born early, right? He just had a birthday. He just turned five. Y'all just don't know how amazing that is. He just turned five. And when I tell you he is a miracle child, he really is a miracle child. And thankfully, due to the nature of the work we were doing with the title abstracting company, it allowed us to be flexible because we necessarily didn't have to be tied down to an office, but we can actually be remote. And so when my son was born at the time, we didn't know he had any complications or issues, but I would say within 48 hours, really within 24 to 48 hours, we learned that he had um, a specific diagnosis called uh, under the umbrella of trisomy 22 called cat eye syndrome, extremely rare. Um, and it had, and he had so many birth defects, right? And so he was in the hospital, Ms. Sheila, his first year of life, he was in the hospital 222 days between two hospitals. That is a lot. That yes, is enough to put lot. anybody under. Wow. That is enough. And, and, and I tell people all the time, because they're like, why are you so passionate about entrepreneurship? It saved my life. It saved my family's life. Because I don't know what employer would have allowed me to be um, full time with benefits yeah. and not working on the job as great for over 200 days. 
you find me wow. an employee all time up today. However, I had my own business. My husband and I were already running our own business. And so being able to be flexible where we were, we were, you know, we were divided, right? We, we still have other children, right? And they were still school aged. I'm still right. married. We still have a business. And we also have a child who's in the hospital. How do you how do you handle it all? Honestly, yeah. I honestly don't know. And literally, by the grace of God, I'm not going to try to dim it down. It's by no might of my own. But he has set up things already for us, knowing what we were going to be able to go through in the future. So we would be in the hospital room, laptops, printers. We'll be at the nurse's station. Can y'all can y'all can y'all fax this over? Can you copy this? Can because they know the souffrants are going to work, right? Okay. We have yeah. to work. We have we have mortgage. We have children. We still have to take care of. You know, one of us is at home with one with the three children. The other one of the other ones at the hospital with our other son. Talk about hard. Yeah. Extremely. Oh I can't even put it into words. You know, and we could talk about that for a later day. But yeah, yeah. us being entrepreneurs still allowed us, so that allowed us, honestly, to live on survival mode for three years, because that was just his first year of life. My son now is five. He's had 20 surgeries. He's he's in therapies. He's, he's doing phenomenal right now, right? But those first three years were crucial, critical, in and out the hospital, um, you got so many teams of people that you have to consult with you as a parent caregiver, like parent caregiver is hard, hard. Okay. It is hard, hard, hard. You know, being a parent is difficult, but when you add caregiver, now you have yeah. other people that you have to talk to consult with. And they're also analyzing and judging you to make sure you're capable of taking care of your child. Wow. It's a wow. Lot. It's a lot. That's a lot. And then so at what point and still do you have bills? self-care? Yes. What point there do you have no self-care? Care. There's no self-care. Self-care was being able to come home and be discharged from the hospital and sleep in my bed. That was self-care because that is all we could really do at that time. We ate, we ate out for three years. I didn't cook, but the business made enough money for us to be able to eat out as a family of five for three years. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. What I'm putting down, y'all. Yes, right? I love so, it. I love it. <laughs> Listen, I tell you, I can Woo! go on, <laughs> but that's somebody I else's story, it. and that's why I'm also passionate about helping the community. And I'm, yeah. my, and we're also we just we just launched um, last week that we started my son's foundation, the Lorenz Souffrant Family Foundation. I want to help parent, family, caregivers of pediatric children, help them to keep their head above water. Just even making $500 a month will be a, will be such a drastic change. When you talk about medicine, doctor's visits, travel, um, medical supplies, when y'all talk about that adding up, yeah, we just got a bill from us so being in an ambulance. That was $1,500. And the insurance did not cover that. Ouch. Yeah, that's a lot. Wow, that's what. What is his name? Loren. Lorenz. Lorenz. Okay, happy birthday, Lorenz. <laughs> so glad you're here. Please let him hear this. Happy yes. birthday. You're a blessing to so many. Yes, he has a purpose you. for his life. That's why he's here. Absolutely. And I'm so glad that you pushed through. And it makes you feel. And for anyone that's listening, when you have your situation. You know, when you hear Abby's experience, then you can look at yourself and say, you know what, I, what I'm going through ain't even that bad. Like I'm home sleeping in my bed every day. I'm able to cook mm -hmm. if I choose. My kids are fine. My husband's fine. And sometimes mm -hmm. we don't look at it as, oh, it could be worse. Mm -hmm. But we focus on ourselves and we're just like, oh. Oh, I don't want to get up. We're so spoiled. We're so comfortable. Mm -hmm. Blah, blah, blah. We make the most excuses. Mm -hmm. We procrastinate. Mm -hmm. We no longer have that drive. We feel like someone owes us something. But at the end of the day, you have to work for it. As you see, she said she had a laptop and everything at the nursing station. She Maybe. didn't stop. She had to continue <laughs> to work. I mean, that right there is encouragement enough. Now, when you got into government, okay, so you was doing the abstract, okay? Yes. So then when, how did you get interested in going into government contracts? Okay, 
Listen, it's a, it's it's like it's the funniest story, right? Okay. So in that three year period, we're kind of we're kind of uh, in that three year period, we kind of roll over into the time of the pandemic, twenty twenty. At that time, I also got pregnant with my youngest, and I was like, "Oh Lord, I don't know what we're gonna do, right?" Because I got my my hands are already full, my plate is already full. But Lord, I'm gonna trust you, make a way. And I'm not gonna lie, I was extremely nervous because I I'm I'm very confident in myself and my abilities, even if stuff don't even work. Like I'm gonna, we're gonna do it, we're gonna we're gonna succeed. If we don't see succeed, we'll analyze it and do our best to uh, reassess and come back to the table and execute again, right? Yeah. So during the pandemic time, I had my daughter in May of 2020. So, you know, I'm already like, we're already sitting down chilling, everybody in the, everybody in the house, right? And I come across um, an organization that was teaching about government contracting that was local to in my area. And I love to learn. I love to learn new things. And so I was just intrigued. And so I took their classes. Um, they were free. Their webinars sound like great. I don't have to go in person. This is like right up my alley. Perfect. Right. I, I, at the time, I like to hide behind the screen. So being on Zoom was was perfect for me. And I have a newborn baby and I still have kids who are doing virtual school, which was crazy in and of itself. Right. Um, and so I started taking their classes and I was committed to learning. But there there's things that intrigued me. But however, there were still some missing pieces to it, right? So then like probably after about 10 months or so of taking classes for free, I just kind of left it alone and let it be what it be, right? Ever, right? We were still working the real estate business and it was still fine. And then I would say in 2022, I was on TikTok. I finally, I finally, you know, gave into it and got on another social media platform, you know, <laughs> got on TikTok. Like, oh Lord, what am I gonna do? I don't even, I don't even utilize my other social media accounts properly at all. So here I go on TikTok. I'm on TikTok listening and learning. And then I come across this little black lady, this little black lady who is just, she vibrant. She talking her stuff and she, and she talking about government contracting. She's talking about the government got this kind of spending budget and bill and you need to join us on um, this webinar. I'm like, well, okay, she's speaking my language, right? Because I know a lot of information, a lot of stuff that, that goes on in social media land and business, a lot of it is fluff, right? And I can I can weed through the fluff, but she said something that was intriguing to me. So I'm like, let me see what she got going on. So that was Coach Brooks, Coach Latasha Brooks. Look, she, she is my mentor. I'll let y'all know right now. Now y'all can't have her, I'm her favorite. <laughs> All right, well, yeah, she's, she was at her too, but I'm her favorite. So, but you know, Ooh. she may tell you different. Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I took a webinar with her, learning, to, getting to know more about what is this government contracting thing? Like I had heard about it a few years ago, went through some trainings. It was okay. Wasn't really intrigued because there were still some missing pieces. Got on with Coach Brooks and she just blew my mind. I'm like, sign me up for whatever she got going on. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I literally signed up for that webinar. Maybe a week or two later, I signed up for her boot camp to learn more in depth how to get into government contracting. Um, when I tell you it was amazing, I don't think y'all can understand what what I'm saying. It was amazing. Not only was it amazing, she broke it down in ways that made me understand the just the 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 environment, the arena of government contracting. Not only that, at that time I was like, all right, I'm still doing my real estate business and this I had to focus. So I Left that alone, let my husband operate that completely, and let me focus okay. completely on this. Now, and I was already doing business consulting, so I was already kind of bringing in my business consulting into government contracting, seeing how does it, how does it all fit, where does it make sense, right? So when I just, so I officially started government contracting with my company June first. Well, within the first forty five days, we won eight contracts. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. You said <laughs> your first was June 1st, your first contract, and then you won eight. No, we start. We officially started government contracting, like us, us, us being active in the portals, um, having our certifications, um, getting the solicitations, and actually putting out bids. We started that June 1st, but within 45 days. We were awarded eight contracts. Whoa. Yes. Okay. I am. Well, you got to get the juice. You got to get the juice, sis. I you am get the juice. Team, go hard or go home, right? Yeah. 
I've experienced enough hard, as you can hear, I've experienced enough hard in my life, enough for yeah. a lifetime, right? So it really doesn't matter what new thing I'm trying to do, trying to learn. It ain't as hard as what I've been through, right? Um, but I also know that if I want to succeed in something, I got to let some things go, which Ooh. included some family, really Whoop. most family, okay? Um, what I learned, listen, and we all have a knack for family. We love family. However, some of us got to put family in place. Some of them can't have first position. Come on. They may Say need that. to be in third position. Third, yes. I love you. I will show up. I may show up for holidays. Like, you know, if I can't show up for holidays, I'll at least send some money for the for the groceries, for the for the food, <laughs> you know, because I just can't be that present. Yeah. I need my those who are in my first position, those who are in my inner inner circle, they need to be feeding me. Mm. I can't be feeding other people in order for me to be great. I can't be feeding people in that sense, right? Because in my second circle, I'm feeding. But in my first circle, I need to be fed. And I'm very Come intentional on. about who feeds me. Okay. Listen, hold <laughs> up. That's a, that's a pose. Be intentional of who feeding you. I'm telling you. Woo! And you're not yeah, going to always be right because there's some people who are there who, who are not necessarily supposed to be there. But you go through a weeding process. And sometimes some people are supposed to be there just for a season. No love lost. It's mm. all right. Okay, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> Hold on, we got to go to a commercial break. But when we come back, I do want to hear. I want to hear more. But child, you got me going, honey. All right, we'll be back for this commercial break. Oh my god! Are you looking for relief from pain? insomnia or anxiety i too was there i was taking over 21 pills and supplements a day until i found cbd cbd oil helped relieve my pain anxiety and depression i was able to wing myself off of all of my medicines yes even my opioids listen you can shop a houseofhemp.com for various ways to get cbd into your system to help you as well you can get them in gummy form flower form or oil form as i mentioned earlier listen you can get your sleepy gummies you can get your cbd gummies your delta eight gummies or even your delta nine gummies at a house of hemp dot com okay okay all right so thank you a house of hemp for sponsoring this episode I am, we're talking to Abby and she's just been throwing some gems our way. I hope you're catching them. Understand that no matter what you go through in life, if you stay focused and you have that passion, you can be successful. Now we talked about her experiences where her son staying in the hospital for over 220 days, um, her drive for her and her husband to continue to stick together and continue to work. We also spoke on her getting into government contracting, how she got into it, how she started June 1st, and then when it been 45 days, she had eight contracts. Listen, we've got to hear more, more of her story and more about this government contracting because baby, I need Let's to go. know. So if I'm a newbie and I'm interested in getting into government contracting, where do I start? Sign me up, coach. Put me in, coach. You start, you start with me. I'm listening. I'm going to tell you right now. You start with me. All right. <laughs> Find me. Listen, I have a lot of content that's on YouTube. YouTube.com okay. at Abby in front. I'm putting out stuff for the community there, answering a lot of their um, introductory questions that they have. Um, where do I get started? What do I do? I just did a video recently that, that talked about 10 things you need to do. And it's not that it's difficult, but when you work with the government, you got to have your stuff in place. They, listen, they don't play around. However, it's not anything that we as business owners shouldn't already have, right? And if you, and you, some of us may not have, like, say, one or two things. That's okay. Those two things, generally speaking, are not hard to obtain. You just got to know what to do and where to go get them. Um, and so when we're, the government does business with businesses, okay? They, they do do very small amounts of business with people, but I would say 99% of the time they're doing business with businesses. So first you got to have a business. 
however you want to be set up, I'll let you figure that out. You know, work with you and your own tax advisor or your business lawyer, figure that out, those details, right? In having a business, you have to have a couple things, right? <clears throat> you have to have a, a business address, right? Um, in being in getting legitimized, right? I don't even know if that's the word, but we're gonna call it, we're gonna say it's the word today. In getting it's legitimized, they have to know that you have a space. You know, a lot of people like to use virtual addresses. Yeah, they're cracking down on that because virtual addresses lead to more spam and more um, fake businesses, scam businesses. And so it is, it is an investment, right? However, you have to have an address. Now, now, now you can also use your home address Temporarily, I always say temporarily because we also want to scale up. If you don't have the ability to have uh, an address um, at a commercial space um, or even like renting out a room per se, um, you can definitely use your home address, right? Um, you have to have your EIN. You have to have um, your operating agreement. Um, you have to have a business bank account. How they're going to pay you? <laughs> they don't pay you through Zelle and Cash App. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> We're not doing that. That is such a trigger for me. I'm sorry. Can I tell you? Yeah. No, you cannot. I can invoice you though. I can invoice right. you. <laughs> um, and you know, and, and when you're doing government contracting, there's there's three there's three main levels, right? You're gonna either want to work with you can work with some or you can work with all. Federal government, those are the big boys that got the most money, right? But then you have your state government, whatever state that you're located in, or whatever state that you want to do work with work in. You can work with any state that you want to. And then we're also going to uh, work with local government. Local government is your city, your county, your schools, your airports, right? I like to say anybody who's got a really, really big budget probably is associated with, some with, with something with the government. And they all have opportunities to work with small businesses. Um, when we're dealing with government contracting, we are solving problems for the government. And for me, I haven't found anyone else that have more problems than the government, right? So they need lots and lots of help. And people think that they, and they're not saying that they don't solve problems. They do. They have internal, they have, they have their sector that solves certain problems. But when you talk about getting things done and doing things, people are so shocked. That's all, that's us. That's small businesses, right? So let me give y'all some examples, right? And this can work in any sector, right? Um, well, actually, I, this is going to start, I'm going to start with local. And people love to talk to me about this. So I have a video that I, on my YouTube page talks about vending machines. And people are like, how do you do vending machines with government contracting? Well, when you go into the courthouse and you want something to drink, there's a vending machine there. Do you think the government that your city is operating that vending machine, do you think that they're they're replenishing those, th those drinks and snacks? No. I, me, us, we who have a vending machine business, we are the ones that are fulfilling that for them. Even in schools, even in airports. Um, and people are like, wait, what? Um, even sometimes, even like in your courthouses, something as small as changing a light bulb or, or providing light bulbs, right? People are like, wait a minute, no. So you're saying yeah. somebody who's in office can't order light bulbs? Because I know I have my assistant order us paper and light bulbs, different things like that. However, yeah. All those, a lot of things that, that are going on and functional in the courthouse, a lot of those things are supplied by business owners. Wow. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. That's a lot. That's a lot. Because <laughs> your average person does not know that, does not know because you, because the government is so big, you think the employees that work there handle okay. that. But no. the government is, they are subcontracting in a sense. Mm -hmm. And they put out a bid saying, hey, mm -hmm. we need this. And then they have verbiage of what they're looking for. Correct. And then you apply for it. You so then they pay bid. you and they pay you to get everything done. Correct. Exactly. Okay. So it, it sounds it sounds simple now. Now, I've seen some government contracts. Sometimes the verbiage is intimidating. It is. How did you get past that verbiage or as you did it more and more? You did I it? Care. I don't care what the verbiage was. You said you're looking for light bulbs. We're going to find you some light bulbs. <laughs> if that's what you want, I'm going to get it. to you. 
I have so so so, so I, I'm not a shopping contract queen, right? So I, I I do business consulting administrative work, right? But some of the some of the solicitations that I saw in these different vendor portals, and you have to be registered in these portals um, to bid, right? Um, I was intrigued. I was like, they're looking for that. They're looking for this. I, I have seen so many things across all levels of government. I've seen, I've, and I've done, I've supplied car seats to Department of Human Resources. And so when you think about people who need assistance, even with WIC and how they get their supplies and different things like that, who is supplying those breast pumps and who is supplying those car seats, um, cribs, they put those solicitations out there. You're like, wait, what? Hold on, hold on. Wait, what? Hold on. Pause, pause. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, so you're getting government contracting to get the things that the government offers to the people. Yes. And you're actually buying them for the government and then the government pays you. Correct. All right, so with the car seats, what's some other things, contracts that you've done that you have, you know, you won successfully when you bid it? Okay. Absolutely. I have um, purchased school supplies. I like um, for um, a school. So we we supplied. Let's see. In that particular bid, we provided paper, flashcards, building blocks, bare blocks. It seems like usual things that you would probably use in like a pre-K, kindergarten, first grade level for math, math um, supplies for younger children in the school. They put out a bid. They liked our numbers. We won. We supplied it. Got paid. Right. Um, and uh, let's see, what else, what else have I done? I've done um, well, my biggest contract, right? Let's talk about my biggest contract. So my biggest contract was, was over a million dollars and it was supplying meat. I'm not a butcher. What? 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 Hold up. It's supplying meat? Meat. meat. We M -E -A -T. did M-E-A-T. We, we supplied three items, chicken liver, leg quarters, and I can't remember the third one. <laughs> Wait. Wait, that contract was over a million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> and it was meat. It was meat. <laughs> what? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, yes. Listen. Oh, people need to hook, they need to be hooked up with you, sis. They baby, need me, baby. I'm trying to tell you. I'm listen, it it has literally changed our life. Like I thought my real estate was good. Oh, this, oh, this is good. This is good. Now, I'm not gonna say, and I'm I'm know I'm making it sound super easy. And that's only it's only easy for me to explain it in this way because I've done yeah. it. I'm right. in it, you know. Uh, when I'm teaching um, my students about this, I, I'm the first of all, I'm giving y'all the same energy. Right. We're looking up suppliers and wholesalers. We're going through the process of registration, making sure that you are properly positioned to not only seek opportunities, but also that you can also be found. Right. Because yeah. sometimes opportunities that come out in this government world, you really have there's a small amount, a smaller amount that comes out in the portals where they put out a, a solicitation. Right. And let you know what they need. But when you're in this arena, the best thing for you to do is build relationships. You get way more contracts through your relationships. Listen, they'll call I, you on the phone and say, "Hey, Abby, um, uh, the neighboring county needs light bulbs as well. Can you call so and so?" And she's expecting your phone call. No problem. <laughs> we, did, we did a good job. We did I love it. Job. And and you know through business, we all know through business, the best part of marketing, form of marketing, is word of mouth. Yes. It's the same thing the government. Wow. They do the same thing. Okay, so tell me about your program. you you have you have ment mentees, right? You have a yes. mentorship? Yes. Right, so I have a mentorship. I, I, <laughs> so I have a mentorship. Um, it meets on Mondays at um, 8 p.m. Eastern time, 7, 7 p.m. Central. I'm in Central. I'm located in Huntsville, Alabama. So we are Central time. But we meet every Monday and we literally go over contracts. I teach you guys how to find contracts. Um, we go over contracts. We'll, we'll, I'll pull a contract. We'll go through the details, how to respond. We'll go through how to find um, your third-party vendors, uh, wholesalers, distributors, manufacturers. We'll go through go through the whole nine. 
Um, sometimes some some of our my mentees will bring a contract. We'll go over it there. Oh, I'll find contracts. And in this particular season, since we're in fourth quarter, there's so many contracts. This season, I'm literally just putting them on game. If they if you didn't do your due diligence during the week, Abby is going to provide you guys with contracts. And so this week we went over we went over contracts uh, for uh, car seats. Right, my state was looking for car seats again, and I said, listen, y'all bid on it. And we can bid through my account. And I'm t- and I'm probably shouldn't be doing this, right? But I built certain relationships with certain um certain mm-hmm. certain mentees, and I said you can absolutely bid and you can have all the money. I don't want the money. I just want you to have the win. Yeah, that's awesome. I want you to have. That the win. is so awesome to have that heart for the people. Listen, Always. listen. listen I- I need, okay, now do you be holding people's hand? Because I need my hand held. <laughs> <laughs> See, listen, let me tell you, I don't hold people's hands, right? However, because I'm so community oriented, we're literally doing a huddle. There's so many of us in the group. There's there's whether you're struggling or whether you're on top, you're gonna help somebody, right? Okay. There's a question, there's gonna be a concern, there's gonna be a win, whatever it is, the community that I'm creating is helping you wherever you are. Right. And you have no choice but to step up because that's the, that's just the, the, the nature of our community, because I want everybody to win. I want y'all to win. It's right there. I see so many opportunities that I cannot handle. I cannot manage. I cannot bid. And I have a team and we cannot go after all of those things. So those of you who are a lot of my mentees are, are brand new. They're starting out here. I see this. Go, go, go apply for this. You know what to do. I, I, I have taught you well. Go find a vendor, get your numbers, submit your bid. I want you to win. Get used to winning because that's what we're trying. That's what we're doing. Get used to winning. Oh, my gosh. It's either win or win. That's the only options. We're going to win or we're going to win. Period. Pretty much. And that's, and that's my whole desire. And it gives a different spin on to, you know, what you do as a business owner. And I tell people all the time, because they're like, well, we want to do shopping contracts, right? Because I'm known the shopping contract queen. So like, how do you get into shopping contracts? And I said, well, listen, for every industry, you can provide a service and a product, right? right. So if you, let's say you do janitorial, and I probably see more contracts for construction and janitorial, they're like hand in hand, right? And if all this fails, I'm going to janitorial, let y'all know right now, right? Because I know I can find a contract. But let's say janitorial as an example. You do janitorial work, you like to do cleaning, whatever the case is. As a service, you can clean, right? You know know all the details about that. However, on the product side, you know what products you use to clean with. You have cleaning products, you have the, the brushes and scrubs, you have gloves, you have trash bags, you have the the cart that has all your stuff on it. Those are all supplies that are also in bids that other agencies are looking for. Wow. So you can provide a, a, a product or a, or a service within your industry. You don't have to go outside of your industry. I don't want you to go outside of your industry. I want you to stick okay. to one thing. And within okay. that one thing, you can provide a service and a product. And ma- you can maximize in the marketplace that way. That's very good advice. That's very good advice because so many times we, I know when I look at contracts, it's all over the place and I try to maneuver myself to fit the mm-hmm. contract, but that's, I ain't got, I don't know nothing about it. <laughs> and you don't so need to. And I did that. Is. And I did that in the beginning. And that's why it, you get, you get burnt out and exhausted. Yeah. Um, Cause you're like, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and supply these baby bottles. No, I don't do nothing with children, you know? I don't, I don't do, I don't, yeah. I don't do it, you know, but yeah. after, after time you get to learn and better curate what you have to offer to, to the marketplace, to these different agencies. And so when you're going to these different events, whether it's on virtual or whether it's in person, you know, and you're marketing your business, um, they know you're the, you're the, you're the janitorial girl. You are, you, you do all things janitorial, right? And you want to be known for a thing that way your name resonates with more people with, the service or product that you have to offer. So doing multiple things, it confuses them. Shoot, it confuses me sometimes. I get, I can't keep up sometimes. Yeah. But when I narrow down and focus on what I was going to do, then from then I was successful. I was sorry. I would say I was more successful because I can't do all these things. I can try, but I'm gonna be burned out really, really quick. So right. my advice is: we all do many different things. We have many different skills. Hone in on one and trust that one. I promise you, you won't okay. be disappointed. So is there a best time to start? 
Like, Anytime. is there a certain time in the season to start? If I would say that is the best time, mm, I would say quarter one for the government because it is okay. not as active, right? Um, right now we're in fourth quarter for them. That is July to September. It's on and popping right now. There's the, mm. the most money is spent in this quarter. After this quarter is done, the beginning of the first quarter, October 1st, it's still a little hot, but it's, 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 it's coming down, right? The okay. slowest season is the first, is the first quarter. Um, okay. However, if you're listening to this podcast and it's the second quarter, it don't matter. The, it, there's open registration, right? Get in <laughs> when you can, okay? okay? The longer you delay, the longer you delay. That's on you, yeah. right? I'm all about action and execution. You want something, you show up for it, right? Most definitely. So whenever you can, get in. There, there is no, you know, set time where you can and cannot enter. Um, at least that's for right now. You know, things change with the government every day, all the time. Mm -hmm. But as far as I've learned, as if you want to be a vendor, if you want to be a supplier of services or products uh, within any form of government, their uh, portals are always open to receiving new vendors all the time. Okay, so tell me about your mentorship. And is that an open enrollment for your mentorship as well? Yes. So it's open enrollment for my mentorship. Um, you can find our mentorship at patreon.com slash resource membership. So we meet on the Patreon platform. Um, I give gems. I give tips. I put out contracts that I find because I see so much. There's so much, so much that comes in my inbox. It is just like overwhelming sometimes. Um, but um, like I said, we meet once a month. We have a live Zoom call. I prefer I prefer for people to meet with me in this space because you get to be a part of the community. There's someone that may ask a question that you didn't think of. There may be someone who has a similar question to you and you just don't want to necessarily ask it. Um, you have access to me one-on-one -on -one during that time. So you absolutely want to maximize. And I also bring a couple of my other friends who are in the space um, in there to answer questions, to give insight, to give gems, whatever the case may be. I want to provide my community with the best. Um, and it's affordable. I mean, it's just, it's 50 a month. I don't want to make it astronomical. I'm not trying to be guru, influencer, whatever the case is, and, and having y'all pay like light bills for a mentorship, like, no. And you know, my family's big, so our light bill is like 400 a month and they don't turn off nothing. So I'm not trying to do that to y'all, all right? Yes. <laughs> wow. So well, it, that is so yeah. affordable. Like Pick you have money. so much knowledge, you're the GOAT, you're the shopping contract queen. And it's only that amount. Like I am signing up, sis. I am I signing up. More. And I tell people all the time, like, I'd rather you get in the community to get what you can get, right? Because when, when you get to the point of my, like, one-on-ones, like, I would rather that be a point of execution that you've done the, the foundational work first. Yes. I don't prefer to do funda foundational phone calls only because that's something you can do for free, right? I want to maximize on your investment right. where we can, at a point where we can execute. But I try wow, my best to give as much foundational stuff through my YouTube page um, in, in video format and then also to my community so that you have the time and the resources to build up and, and to get those things checked off that list one by one. Right. There's no particular rush. However, mm -hmm. you know, I want to give as much as I can um, for, for the community to to get to where they need to get to. And then it's like, all right, Abby, I think I need to do a one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm like, all right, let's go. Let's go. Wow. <laughs> that is so awesome. Okay, so you don't have to be in the area because she she's going to do it remote. So yeah. you're going to meet on on um so Zoom or whatever you're going to yeah, meet. Yeah, we meet on Zoom on Mondays. Yep. You're going to meet Mondays. on Zoom. You're going to pay that. She's going to give you all everything that you need to be successful in government contracting. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it today. I will start as well. So if anyone from the Thrive Tribe wants to join in, we'll be in together. And then yeah. we can keep up with everyone's con, you know, not contract. We can keep up with everyone's um, progress. Yes. And I'm going to come back here and... 
Give y'all my wins. I'm telling you. <laughs> so, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to have some wins because I'm learning from the best. She knows what she's doing. She is confident. She has the experience. She have the connections, everything that you need to learn from a mentor. I am so glad that you're here today, Abby. I mean, Thank listen. You, Thank you, Michelle. Woo! I appreciate you so much. You know, Baby. you got to the wrong too. So I'm like, I had to get on Miss Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> I am so glad that you're here. Okay, so tell the people what is your social media handles? How okay. can they contact you? All of that. But we're going to have okay. it in the show notes as well. But I want okay. to, them to hear it. All right. So my my hub where it has all my stuff, go to abbysufront.com. Right. And that's going to be my hub for everything. I got quick links for everything that you need to do. You want to get into government contracting. You want to get into the resource membership. You want to find me on YouTube. You can go there. If you go on YouTube, also look me up, Abby Soufront. You'll find me there. Um, on Instagram, I am at Abby in the letter N for Nicole Contracts, Abby and Contracts. That's where I am on Instagram land. Um, I, I am on Facebook, but I'm I normally just having a good time on Facebook. I teach, but mostly you'll see everything. You'll see everything more constructive on YouTube and Instagram. Um, and if you just like to have a good time and just, I, I live life on Facebook. So, um, you know, I just, I just be hanging out on Facebook. So, yeah. Yeah. And Soufrant is spelled S-O-U-F-F-R-A-N-T. Yes. For those who's not actually watching this, you're yes. actually listening to it. Okay, right. so for the people, tell the people as we close out, what is your closing remarks, advice, or any gems that you want to drop? Um, at the end of the day, life is going to keep going on. Life is going to be lifing. And it is truly up to you to make the changes necessary to get to where you want to get to. And there are opportunities that are available out there for you to take advantage of that can truly change the trajectory of your life. You already have what you need. You just got to yeah. show up. So show up for you so you can show out. That's it. <laughs> Come on, sis. Yes. That's one of my favorite sayings. You already have what you need. Everything you that you need have. in life is in you. Yes. Oh, see? See, we, we're right here together. Thank you for coming to the show, love. Oh, my goodness. You all go Thank follow you guys. her. Go join her mentorship for the price go up. Then you, you got to use no. gas money for that. <laughs> <laughs> because at the end of the day, that price is extremely low. But I see she has a heart for the community. And that's why she's doing it. She wants everyone to be able to um, be take the advantage of it and learn as well because it can change your life. It can really change your life. Listen, thank you for showing up today. Thank you for coming to the show. I am so excited um, to have Abby to be here today. Um, listen, I'm almost speechless. And y'all know I don't be speechless. I love her heart. <sighs> I love the Sheila C. Hill show because we bring the best. Um, listen, if you haven't done so, subscribe, like, and share, and give us some feedback. If Abby said anything that resonates with you, please let us know. Um, and if you want her to come back and tell more of the side of her, her struggles in her family and how she made it through on that personal side, put it in the comments. Give us some feedback on that as well because so many parents are dealing with children with special needs and they are at wit's end and becoming a parent caregiver. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother episode that we can touch on as well. But um, just feed, give us some feedback and just know that we appreciate you listening on today. <sighs> Listen, if no one's told you today that you are loved and highly appreciated, I'm telling you that you are loved and highly appreciated. And I want you to do the best that you can do today. And just know that everything that you have that you need in life is within you, okay? So understand that. Like, subscribe, and share the Sheila C. Hill Show. And until next time, let's get it. Let's get it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get it until next time on the Sheila C. Hill Show, baby. Yeah.